In the first part of this tutorial, we learned how to draw lines and we also learned how to use color information on layers to instruct AutoCAD in how we want lines to be printed. So um, we have all the information really that we need to do a very basic plan and that's what we're going to do now. Okay, so we're back in business again. Now this is where we left it last time. We had uh, five colored lines drawn and each of those colors was an instruction to AutoCAD and how we wanted the line to actually print in PDF. So, but we no longer need those. So what I can do is just, I just, just click my mouse down on the screen, drag a window across them. And I find the easiest way really then is just to hit delete. Just hit the delete button and they are gone. Now what we're going to do is, is we're going to go back up to our layer selection box and we're going to choose layer one, which is the red layer. Then we're going to draw a line. So I insert my first point. And what I'm going to do now is I want this line to be exactly two meters long. So I type in 2000 millimeters and then I accept it by pressing enter and then I hit escape. So now I'm out of the line function. Next thing I want to do is I want to draw a line which does not continue from the previous one, but is at a fixed point relative to it. How I do that is I make the line tool active again. Then I bring my cursor down to the end point of the last line. So I see the little green box. But instead of hitting enter, what I do now is I just type in 1000. And then with the polar tracking system obviously active, I click my first point one meter exactly from the end of my previous line. And then with my new starting point and, and using polar tracking as a guide, I type in 2000 millimeters. So I have another line that's two meters long. Now I'm just going to, I'm going to press down on my mouse wheel just to pan a little bit over to my left. I'm going to draw a line, not beginning where the last line ended, but a meter away from the end point of that last line. So I let my cursor hover and without clicking anything, I just type in 1000 and then suddenly I find myself one meter away from the end point of the last line. And I'm going to click accept for that, enter. And now I've got the start point of my new line exactly where I want it to be. And again, this is going to be two meters long. So I enter 2000 millimeters. And now I'm going to repeat the process all over again. So I end up with four red lines. So these will be structural elements. And these four lines are each two meters long. So what we're doing here, obviously, is we're beginning to draw an external wall. We only have the inner surface of it drawn so far. So just for the sake of the exercise, what I'm going to do is say that my external structural wall is 400 millimeters thick. That's just over a foot. And to do that, the easy way to do it is to offset the lines that I've already drawn. Now, I have two ways of doing this. I can go up to this little offset icon if I want to, which is just up here and click on that. And it'll ask me what distance do I want to offset by? Or I can type in the word offset. I can type in the command offset and it'll ask me the same thing. How much do you want to offset by? And I say 400 millimeters. So with the offset command active and the distance set the way I want it, AutoCAD asks me, okay, what would you like to offset? So I click on my red line here and I say, this is the thing I'd like. It says, which side do you want to offset to? And I go to the bottom of the page and click enter to accept. And then I repeat that exercise four times. And now we have the beginnings of an external wall. So we have the inner leaf and the outer leaf, but we don't have the end walls and we don't have the jams. So as you can see, there's three openings in this wall. To finish off those openings and make them look right, I need to draw a jam. So to do that, I just simply click on the line tool and panning down and getting in a little bit closer with my wheel. I select the end of one line, use that as my starting point, then go down and select the end of the other line and that becomes my finishing point. By pressing enter, I have a line. Then I press escape and I'm out of the line function. So now we have four pieces of wall. Two of them are complete. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to come to the end of this line over here. I'm going to click enter to accept it as my start point. And with the vertical polar tracking on, which I can see here because it's got those uh, little green lines, I'm just going to go up the page and click an endpoint for my line, 
pretty much anywhere. And I'm doing this because I'm going to demonstrate something now in a minute which will be quite useful. So just uh, follow along with me. Just uh, click, a, just make your line exaggeratedly long. Okay, so we have a room that pretty much has its south wall done, but it's not a room yet. So to complete it, what I'm going to do is I'm coming back over to the left-hand side here, and I'm going to start a line from the end of this previous line. And as I go vertically up the page with the polar tracking on, I type in 5000, 5000, because I want a wall that's going to be exactly five meters long. I've got an uh, click enter and I've got an end wall. Now, just for the sake of this exercise, I'm going to make the north wall identical to the south wall. And there's an easy way of doing this. I've already drawn the structural elements of the south wall. So I'm just going to mirror them about an axis so that the same information I used to create the south wall now becomes my north wall. So to do that, I have two choices. I can either type in the command mirror or I can come up to the mirror icon up here, which is one of the handy little icons we always use. The mirror icon says, select those things you would like to mirror. And I do. I just drag my mouse across the items that I want to mirror. Then I go back to the gable wall that I just drew. That's the perpendicular wall. And just by hovering around the middle of the line somewhere, I find its midpoint, which is exactly what I want. And I click on it. So this is going to be the first point of my mirror. Now, again, by moving my cursor horizontally across the page, you'll see that the polar tracking is coming on again. So at some point in the horizontal direction with the polar tracking on, I just click OK. AutoCAD says, well, what would you like to do here? Would you like to delete the elements that you're going to mirror? So I want to keep them, so I say don't erase. AutoCAD obliges. I click to accept, and as you can see now, I have two walls in my room that are almost complete and two gable walls that are getting there. So we're making a bit of progress. Now, I just want to show you why I made the right-hand gable wall a little bit longer and a little bit exaggerated. It's because it gives me the opportunity to use a little tool which you're going to find extremely useful, and that is the Trim tool. So follow me up here while I click on it, and this is the easiest thing in the world. I just click on what I don't want, and AutoCAD obligingly gets rid of it. It's so convenient. I have two gable walls, but these walls too have a thickness. So to give them thickness, I'm going to use the Offset tool again. I'm just going to type it in. It already has a dimension of 400 millimeters set for offset, so I'm going to leave that. I'm not going to change it at all. And then when AutoCAD asks me, I'm going to click on the inner leaf of this gable wall, and I go to the left, and this is the direction I want to offset in, and I click to accept. Now I've got a wall. Then I do exactly the same thing with the other gable wall, and now we're getting ever closer to a simple little rectangular room which is all nice and neat. Now I do of course have to make the corners work. So to do this, I'm going to go up to this little icon here where I've got an option to use fillet or chamfer. Filleting is much more to do with curves typically. So I have the chamfer tool selected. It asks me, select the first item you want to chamfer. And I say, there we go. And then the second one, I press enter, there we go. And then I get a nice, neat connection. Uh, I'm just reselecting the tool choosing working in this corner and getting that one to meet nicely too. Then this time I'm just going to press enter because remember if I press enter, the last action I was working on automatically becomes active again. And now I have a little building that has three openings on the north side, three openings on the south side, and some neat gable walls. And we've made some pretty good progress. That really takes care of all our structural stuff. So the next thing I'm gonna do is draw a partition. And because internal partitions frequently aren't structural, in this case it's not, I'm not going to draw it in a red line. I'm gonna draw it in a yellow line. So I go up to my layer selection drop down up here, and I come down to layer number two, which is my yellow layer. Now, I'm just going to pick pretty much any spot at all and any one of these walls. It doesn't make the slightest bit of difference, really, which one you use. Um, this is just an exercise. So I click on the midpoint of this little section of wall here to create a starting point for my yellow line. Then I go straight down to its equivalent piece of masonry on the south side. 
and I accept the endpoint there. It's going to be a perfectly vertical line because I'm going from midpoint to midpoint. And I choose accept and now I've got one face of a plasterboard or a sheetrock partition. And that's cool. So uh, an internal partition is going to have thickness. And typically in the metric world, that thickness could be something like 150 millimeters, about six inches. So I'm going to create the other side of my plasterboard wall using the offset tool again. So I choose offset again. I can either use the icon or I can type in the word. This time I'm, when I'm given the option, I'm going to change from 400 millimeters, which was the previous setting that I was working to, and I'm going to insert 150 millimeters instead. I press enter to confirm that 150 millimeter dimension. Then I choose the thing I want to offset, which is my yellow line. And then I choose the direction in which I want to offset. And then I hit enter. Now I've got two yellow lines parallel. I have a plasterboard partition. So that's pretty cool. Now, I want to make an opening in this plasterboard partition so I can insert a door. So the way I do it is, is I go up and I choose the line icon tool. I go to the beginning of the first yellow line I drew. I let my mouse hover over that, but I don't press enter to accept a point because I want to draw my line relative to this point. I hover over the start point of this line. Then with polar tracking active, I type in 600 millimeters because I want my door to start 600 millimeters away. And then I press enter. Now, as you can see, the way the cursor is reacting here, it's about to start drawing a line for me. And I just want to pick a point that is absolutely horizontal from my starting point. And that's quite easily done because the polar tracking will tell me so. And I will press enter. And now I've got the jam of a door opening in my plasterboard partition. Now in this case, I'm going to make the door opening a thousand millimeters or one meter, which is a little exaggerated. We wouldn't normally go that big, but it's uh, this is an exercise. So let's just work in nice big rounded figures. So I choose offset because I'm going to do is offset the door jam that I drew first. I'm going to have to change the dimension because the last time we offset anything, the dimension we used was 150. Now we are offsetting by a meter or a thousand millimeters. But the routine is the same. I choose the item I want to offset. I choose the direction in which I want to offset. I press enter and I have my second door jam. Okay, now what I want to do here is I want to get rid of those lines which look like the plasterboard is running through my door op. And I'm going to do that using the little tool that we used before. That's the trim tool. And this time I'm just going to click and drag and it gets rid of all of the geometry that I don't need. So now I have an opening for a door. We are making progress. Let's try a window. I'm probably going to print or render this drawing at about 1 to 100, maybe 1 to 200, but maybe 1 to 100, maybe 1 to 50. So I don't need to have the most detailed window you've ever seen. It has to be relatively representative. If I draw something that's too detailed, it's going to clutter up my drawing and look, at, look really messy. I'm going to place my plan in a nice convenient location where I can work and I'm going to make sure that I have my yellow layer active and it is and I go up to my line tool. I select the midpoint of the upper left jam here. That's going to be my starting point for this new line I'm going to draw. I'm going to make a horizontal line ending directly on the neighboring jam. So there we go. I have a yellow line drawn. I'm going to zoom in on that and I'm going to use this as a guide to draw my window frame. So I'm going to go to the very beginning of the previous line I drew and I'm going to draw a line that's 50 millimeters long. This is the start of my window frame. So I'm just going to choose a window frame that is 60 millimeters deep. That's going to just do for the time being. And I click enter to accept. And then I'm just going to draw a line from this position back to my red line, my wall. And now I have a jam. Click exit to get out of the line for a sec. Now to draw the other jam, there's lots of ways I could do it. I could just simply repeat the procedure that I just completed there a second ago. But what I'm going to do is instead, I'm just going to mirror this element of the frame. So to do that, I'm just going to select the elements that form part of the frame. And as it happens, I've also selected this yellow guideline that I'm working with. 
Now the easy way to get rid of that is to press shift and click on it and it'll be removed from the selection. The only thing I'm going to mirror is that little element that I created to indicate a window frame. Now this is why I chose the yellow guideline. I'm going to choose the midpoint of that guideline and then with the polar tracking clearly on I'm going to move my cursor up my screen and click another point at random just so long as I know that it's vertical and then I tell AutoCAD that I want to keep the originals and it inserts the other part of the frame where I want it. Now I don't really want this original yellow line that was just for a guide so I'll get rid of that but I do want something to represent glass something that runs exactly from the middle of the left hand element of the frame to the middle of the right hand element of the frame. Now there is a convention in architecture that says when we're drawing glass in section we always draw two lines and that's fine. It dates back to when we used to draw by hand. Personally I think it's cleaner, neater and very obvious when we're working in AutoCAD or any other CAD package to represent glass with one medium weight line works perfectly well. So that's what I'm going to do here. So that's what that line you're looking at there represents. So now I've got my glass. Now what I want to do now is just fill in all the other bits that we associate with the window opening. And there are things that aren't cut in section but which we can clearly see. So I go up to my layer selection, drop down. This time I'm going to choose the green layer because I'm going to draw a light line. First thing I draw is the interior sill. And I do that very simply just by going from the corner of one jam to the corner of the other jam. That's going to be my internal sill. Obviously it might be a little bit more complicated. I'm actually looking at the window sills in this room and they're not like that at all, but it doesn't matter. We'll just show it like that for now. Then I'm going to show the rest of the window frame, the bit that I will see, but which will not be cut in section. So I draw the inner line of the window frame and then the outer line of the window frame. And again, I'm doing these in green because they're going to print light. I want to show the outer sill. And to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the end point of one of my jams. And I'm going to hover over that end point. And with the polar tracking clearly showing horizontal, I'm going to type 50. So I'm going to choose a position relative to that corner as the start point for my first line then press enter. This is the start point of my new line and I'm going to make that line 50 millimeters so I type in 50 again. Now easiest way to do the next part of the exercise is to mirror this line because I'm going to need its twin on the other side of the jam so I mirror this line. Uh, AutoCAD wants to know do I want to delete the element that I'm going to mirror? I say no I want both of them. And I press accept and now I've got the two ends of my outer sill. All I have to do now is link them with the green line and I have a fairly convincing looking window which will work perfectly well at 1 to 100, 1 to 50, 1 to 200 or at 16th inch if we're working in Imperial. So I've drawn one window and it's going to be pretty much like the rest of the windows that I'll be drawing in these openings. So there's no point in me drawing these things all over again. And if I want to save time in drawing windows, there's a, there's a few options that I've, I've got available to me. I can create, for example, a block, but we won't go the block route today. What we just do is, is we'll just demonstrate one of AutoCAD's very fundamental functions, and that is the copy function. So I'm going to copy this, this entire window structure to um, another opening. So to do that, I select all of the elements that are associated with the window, so the glass, the frame pieces that I see in section, the visible elements of the frame, um, and then the elements that are associated with the sill. Make sure I've got all of those, including those little bits at the end, which I'm inclined to forget about. So I've selected all of them. I'm going to type in copy. It knows which items I want to copy because it already has them selected. It's going to ask me, where are you going to move these things from? So I just come down to the bottom left corner of my window assembly, and I say, I want to move it from here, please. And I click on that and then it says, well, where do you want to move everything to? And so quite obviously, I just go over to the equivalent point in the next opening. And I say, please deposit the copy here. I could have just continued the last command and made another copy. But I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go through this copying system again. So uh, we get used to it. So I type in copy again. This time AutoCAD says, what would you like to copy? 
by pressing P, I'm telling AutoCAD, can you please copy the previous elements we were working on? I don't want to go to the trouble of selecting them all over again, just the ones that we were working on. After inserting P, hit enter, AutoCAD says, cool. So it says, okay, great. Where do you want this new copy to go? And I tell it exactly where I want it to go. Now I've got three windows in my north facade and they look pretty convincing. We're, even though we're not that used to working this way by having colors represent thicknesses of lines and so on, I think perhaps at this stage you're already getting into the hang of realizing, oh, those red lines are going to look structural. They're going to be, you know, quite thick lines. The yellow lines, well, they're going to be windows and glass and things that are cut in section of the and the uh, internal partition. Yeah, I'm beginning to get a feeling for that. And the green line is light. Now I want to include some more windows in the south facade. And to do this, I'm just going to work with the window construction that we already made. And I'm going to mirror those back to the south facade. And we've already used all of these commands, so there's nothing new here. I'm going to do some selection exercise here. And just make sure I've got all the bits that I need to make uh, my window copies. Now, don't forget, I'm going to make a copy of more than one window because I've got three opes. One of those openings is going to be a door, so I only want two copies. So now I've got everything I want. The first point in my mirror is going to be the midpoint of that end wall. The second point is going to be horizontal from that. I click enter and AutoCAD says, do you want to get rid of the original elements? I say, no, I want to hold on to them, please. And it says, fine. And then I click again. And now I have five windows in five window openings. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is draw a door. So to draw the door, I'm going to go back up to my medium weight line and then I go over to my line tool. I'm going to come down to this opening, which does not have a window in it because this is my door opening. I'm going to start drawing at the midpoint of the right hand jam. Polar tracking is on. I can see that. So I come north from my start point and I type in a dimension of one meter because remember, these openings were one meter. To indicate this, that this is a door, I need to draw an arc to indicate the swing. So to do that, I'm going to go up to the arc icon, which is at the top of my workspace. Now, the way I'm going to draw my arc is pretty much the way I always draw my arc. I'm going to choose the option that says center, start, end. So the center of my arc where the door sits in its frame. So that's the center of my arc. The start of my arc is the point directly opposite from it. And the end is the end of the door leaf. So that's the way I want my arc to swing. Now, obviously I have started the exercise and you can see that AutoCAD is doing a perfectly legitimate job. It's creating, it's doing everything I want it to do, but it's exactly the opposite of what I need. So what I have to do is tell AutoCAD, oh, I don't want that version of the arc. I want the other version of the arc. So I hit control and by hitting control, AutoCAD then says, oh, I see what you mean. So now I've got the arc I want, uh, but it's, I have it in a medium weight line, which I don't want. This has to read light. So I'm going to go back up. Now, this is an interesting one. With that arc selected, as you can see with the little blue boxes, I'm going to go up to my layer selection tool. Then I'm going to drag down to the green layer. And because that item was selected as I performed the exercise of moving from one layer to the other, AutoCAD is going to bring that arc from one layer to the other layer. And so it'll end up being green. And I'll be very happy with that because that's the line weight I'm looking for. We have another door that we need to draw and we're just going to do the exact same exercise. We're going to draw a line from the middle of the jam. I'm going, my polar tracking is on, so I'm going directly horizontal to the left. I want a door that's exactly a meter long, so I type in a thousand millimeters and I click OK. Happy with that. I need an arc. I'm going to use the center start end option as I always do. Now, you, you'll probably have a better or preferred way of drawing an arc. It's absolutely of no consequence at all which way you draw your arc. It's entirely up to you. So now we will draw this arc. OK, so the center of my arc is going to be where the door meets the wall. The start of my arc is going to be the point directly opposite from that. And the end of my arc is going to be at the end of the door leaf. But as you can see, AutoCAD again presumes that it's the other arc that I want, the other version, and I have to hit control to say, no, not that one, the smaller one. It obligingly gives me the smaller arc, which I'm happy with. 
and I press enter and I accept it. But again, I, as you can see, it's in yellow, which means it's a medium weight line. And for something like this, I don't want a medium weight line. I want a lightweight line. So with the arc element selected, I go to the top of the sheet and I change from one layer to the other. And because I've got an element selected as I'm doing this, it automatically brings that element to the new layer. So it's going to make my arc green from yellow. And that's all right by me. Our little building isn't looking too bad here. It looks like a pretty convincing small rectangular building. Now, just for the sake of completion, we're going to do two other tiny little exercises that might be useful. We have set up thicknesses and line styles for cyan and for blue. So we're just going to show how they might be used. So now let's say this little space has a mezzanine directly above it. Uh, I can't see it in plan because it's not down here. It's above my head. How do I do it? Well, I used I use a cyan line, which when we print is going to look like a lightweight dashed line and people will go, that's a mezzanine. So we're going to do that now. And to do that, I'm going to go back up to my layer selection, drop down, choose cyan and choose my line tool. Now I'm going to come back into my little room here. It doesn't really matter where we start or where we finish here. This is just simply uh, for the sake of the exercise. As it happens, I'm going to choose the end of the window jam and say, okay, my mezzanine extends right the way to the other wall in a perpendicular fashion. And I click escape once I have that line drawn. Happy with that, I have a mezzanine. How we get up there, uh, where the stairs is, that's a story for another day. Now I want to show how we can use our blue line. So let's just say in the room to, to the right, that's some kind of utility room. And in that utility room, we have a counter, which has a countertop. So I'm going to draw that countertop using my green light line. For convenience, I'm going to start at the uh, door jam. And because polar tracking is on, I'm just going to type in a dimension of 600 millimeters because that's a fairly standard depth for a countertop. Press enter. I've got one line of my countertop drawn. Then I'm going to press enter again uh, to start another line from my countertop and just come right the way down here to my external wall. It comes down in a nice straight vertical line. Once I get to the wall, AutoCAD knows what I want to do. Press enter. I have a countertop. Press escape. I'm out of the line. Okay, here's where we use our dark blue. Back up to the layer selection drop down. I come down and I'll choose my blue line. Now at this bit, I'm not going to be overly geometrically precise about it. I'm just going to do this kind of rough. So I choose my line tool and I zoom in on the area where my countertop is. I'm just going to click on any point, which is, if you can imagine, it's somewhere underneath the countertop, but quite close to the wall. So that's my start point. Polar tracking is on. I'm going to draw a horizontal line, but I'm not going to bring it all the way out to the edge of my countertop. I'm going to stop somewhere short. Then I come down with polar tracking on. I'm coming down vertically. And I'm going to make, I'm going to roughly make a box here. And then you can see what I'm going to do now for drawing the third line. I'm going to use the starting point of my very first blue line as a reference. AutoCAD interprets it that way. And AutoCAD also interprets that I want to create a horizontal line. So once I get to the point where these two interpretations meet, click enter, have the line I want, and then I just simply have to finish off that box. So now I've got a blue box. Happy out. Obviously what I'm showing here is maybe a dishwasher or a washing machine, some kind of piece of white good that sits 600 by 600 underneath a, a countertop. Now there is a convention when we're doing this of drawing a diagonal line through that box. Not sure why. I'm not even sure it's a real convention, but I do it anyway. So we'll just do that. So I come down to one corner and uh, choose a start point for my diagonal line and go up to the other point and choose an end point for my diagonal line. OK, I think we've done everything we need to do now for this exercise. So either we're going to print it or we're going to print it as a PDF that we can bring into Photoshop. So um, that's what we're going to do next because we pretty much have the drawing we need. So you will remember the last time we did this, I can type in plot or print, or I can go find the icon, 
it doesn't make any difference which way you go, you're going to end up in the same place. So I th I'm going to just type in plot and my plot dialog box comes up. And this is where the first exercise we did ends up um, being worth its weight in gold because we set a style for plotting the last time. We called it tutorial, which means we can use it again. The only thing I have to do in any way differently here is I just have to tell AutoCAD to print a different part of my work area because previously we had the print box just around those five lines, but now I want to print the entire building. So I have to change that by clicking on window and dragging a new window across that which I have drawn. And I do that. Now I hit preview. All the other settings are correct. I hit preview. And when I hit preview and I zoom in, all my lines are there and all my line weights are pretty much as I want them to be. So we've drawn our first building plan. Now, I'm going to use this plan as the basis of an exercise that I'm going to do in Photoshop in a couple of tutorials time. So I'm going to save it as the PDF and that's very straightforward. Just choose OK. I'll have to give it a name and a location. You can put the drawing wherever you want to put it. Just make sure it's convenient for you. Press save and in my system, it automatically opens up the new file once it's been made. Uh, it's not really necessary, but there it is. There's an A4 sheet of paper in landscape orientation with the little drawing on it of the small building we're working on. And it looks okay. Hopefully that was all pretty straightforward. And hopefully you're beginning to get the feeling now, maybe if you practice this once or twice, you'll get the feeling that you sort of have 95% of the skills that you would need to work on pretty much any plan that you might be working on in, in the office or in college. So what we'll do in the next tutorial is we'll just go over we we'll go over some uh, AutoCAD functions that we need to touch on that didn't fit neatly into the previous two tutorials. We'll just look at them separately. And then we'll also look at how to bring this plan into Photoshop and make it ready for rendering.